I thought it'd be fun to explore Cursor AI, something I have heard of but never used. I've been using Coding Assistant LLMs since uh, GitHub Copilot was announced. I've also found Perplexity to be a fantastic tool for kind of like doing that initial research phase. And I've most recently been using Supermaven inside of VS Code and NeoVim, which has generally been a fabulous experience. But I've been seeing more and more about Cursor Compose as a way to start projects, specifically in language that you have no experience in. Since a lot of AI LLM work happens inside of the Python ecosystem, uh, I thought we'd give a Python script a try. Let's get into it. Okay, so I have a cursor account set up and uh, it looks like there's a little bit of free usage and I can upgrade to a trial account, trial pro account if I want. So let's download this thing. Okay, so install cursor. Let's take Vim, I, we'll see how that goes. Uh, language defaults to English. Just take defaults here. Uh, launch from the terminal using code or cursor. Uh, let's use cursor since I do use code a bit and let's go. Import VS Code extensions, which is nice, but let's start from scratch. And I'm fine with keeping things open, I'll just remember not to run any work projects through this. So log in, open cursor, good to go. Okay, so we have this cursor tutor to start. We can accept auto completions, which I'd like to do. How to do though, is this just telling me what to do? Do I hit tab? Uh, let's go back. <laughs> it's probably a bad sign that I'm already confused. Uh, can't click. So maybe I'm just supposed to hover over these and look at them, unsure. So accept an autocomplete, we use tab, standard. Uh, prompt and edit, select the thing that we want and then right click for an edit, it looks like. Uh, make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, prompt and edit, ask a question so we can chat um, by selecting a text and chatting with it. And then chat with your code base. Uh, I guess we close this now. <laughs> Cool, love the feeling of not completing something. Okay, get started, MD. Okay, now this is more helpful. Maybe I was supposed to leave that open and then click into the project. Curious. Welcome to Cursor, here are the basics. Prompt and, e uh, and edit, highlight the code and hit command K. Oh, okay, got it. Between the code and the uh, prompt. Use passive voice instead of active. Code should be highlighted and command K should be hit. <laughs> That's great. Uh, command Y didn't seem to work. Command end worked. Let's try that again. Command Y. Command Y no work. Except an auto completion. So let's add a new one here. Here we go. Tab auto completed. Great. Now it looked like that was highlighted. So let's try that again. So okay, having having trouble getting that to proc again. Auto complete. So what can we do here? If I hit Command K, will that toggle? Yeah, but it's not focused. So it's the whole. Okay. So I guess it's just showing that that's what was written, which is actually kind of nice. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep track of what was actually inserted. Okay, uh, ask AI a question. So if we hit Command L, um, okay, so that brings up the general chat. Was I supposed to open this doc to check off the dot cursor tutor items. No, you weren't supposed to open this document to check out the cursor tutor items that are getting started now. You've opened in general introduction to cursor, basic features, functionality. It's not directly related to the cursor, cursor tutor checklist. <laughs> there was no open editor. Um, which made it kind of difficult to know what I was supposed to do. Okay, uh, use at to import files or documentation. Uh, at, get nothing. Not sure what that's supposed to do. Uh, let's see, there's uh, examples. Um, curious, no go on that one. Okay, so highlight some code and hit command shift L to focus the AI on a particular piece of code. Okay, so we'll probably need to open some code here. Uh, Python. Uh, <laughs> awesome. No code in this one. Uh, let's install that, I guess. So far, a stellar onboarding experience that I'm having. Okay. Uh, okay. So now I forgot what I was supposed to do. Um, command shift L. So we have some code here and we're going to run command shift L install C++. Um, let's see. Helpful for new users includes information on how to prompt an editor. Uh, oh wait. Nope. That's the old chat yes okay so that's the old chat uh it came up in the chat window but it's like this modal thing um okay so i have a modal window it looks like i gave it this chunk as context this button doesn't do anything and i can hit chat um <laughs> let's start over again highlight code with command shift l to focus the ai on a particular piece of code try the with code base button to ask about an entire repo okay so i let's not do that yet okay so i have this piece of code 
and you do command shift L, which focuses it. Okay, ask a follow-up question. I don't know C, what does this def struct do? Now it looks like I can chat on just this or the code base. Let's see, we have some options here, search behavior embeddings. Let's just do chat right now. Okay, cool. And then we get a bunch of instructions on that. Um, can we do it again with the code base? Same question, but with the code base. Okay, cool. So then it's providing the global context by passing in all of these questions. I imagine the answer is probably not demonstrably different uh, despite not reading it, but you know, maybe some more context. Okay, cool. Perfect. I say perfect, but that was far from a perfect experience. Uh, if you run into any trouble and have any feedback, feel free to post forms.cursor.sh. Great. Okay, so what I really want to do is start a totally new project. So I hit command shift end to do that. And I think we just uh, select a folder. Let's make one called like cursor or something and open that. Okay. So I want to talk with the chat, which I believe was command L, ask anything. Let's make a new Python script. I'd like to give this script a YouTube URL and get an SRT transcript in return. And eventually I'd like to host it on Cloudflare as a worker. Let's do it. Certainly, let's create a Python script that takes a YouTube URL and generates an SRT transcript. We'll break this down into steps and then I'll provide a basic script to get you started. Later, you can adapt this for Cloudflare workers. Here's a basic Python script to achieve this. All right, and then it wrote me a script. So let's just apply, see what happens. No file to apply to. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so uh, let's see what else we have. So the script does the following, uses the YouTube transcript API to fetch the transcript, extracts the video ID from the URL, formats the transcript data to SRT format to use the script, install the required libraries, pip install YouTube transcript API, run the script and enter the YouTube URL when prompted for hosting on. Okay, so we don't need to do this to start because we're just getting this thing going. However, it didn't let me apply this to a new file. So, um, and now I can't, and now I lost the copy button. Um, let's hit cancel. Okay, copy. And I'm gonna ask a follow-up question. Okay, I'm new to Python. Is there a convention for main index root file names, etc.? Okay, Python, there isn't a strict convention for naming the main or root file, but there are some practices. So main.py, app.py, underscore, underscore, main. Uh, for smaller scripts, when you're just starting out, it's perfectly fine to name the file. Okay, cool. So let's um, take that new file and call it YouTube to srt.py. So remember regarding the file name, you can always run a Python script from the command line like this. Okay, cool. So let's paste in our script. All right, I have Python 3 installed using Homebrew. How should I install dependencies and run this script? Okay, so great. Since you have Python 3 installed via Homebrew, here's how you can install dependencies, run the script, install dependencies, um, open your terminal and run pip3. Okay, so we're gonna copy this. Uh, now it says apply. If I hit apply, does it just run the script? Uh, apply, no, it doesn't. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, so command J should bring that up and we can run pip or run pip three install YouTube transcript. Some key bindings don't go to the okay. Um, and run that. You may have installed Python package into your global environment, which can cause conflicts between package versions. Would you like to create a virtual environment with the package? Yeah. Oh, I immediately regret this. Uh, God only knows. Um, so I see that this is global. I don't know, maybe is this the version I have installed? Python version. Okay, that, oh, it's Python 3 version because Python's dumb. And yeah, I would have loved to just see a version number. What does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> All right, uh, whatever. We're just gonna go global. I, whatever, I don't care that much. Oh, okay, so we got a virtual environment anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is rough. This is rough. Uh, okay, so um, that hasn't uh, gotten fixed yet. Whatever, let's save this and maybe those links will work. Let's open it up again. No, nothing. Okay, so uh, let's see, run the script. We supposedly have dependencies installed. Oh, I can just copy that and then run it. Okay, so theoretically what this should do is tell me that I don't have, I didn't give it a URL 
<laughs> Instead, we get a uh, no module YouTube transcript API sick. Okay, I did skip some steps though, so let's look at those. So replace YouTube to SRT Pi with whatever you've named the script. Okay, no, so I've done that and I've run this script. So copy, and that's what we're trying to do right now. So clearly this isn't linked somehow. So it says for de better dependency management, consider using a virtual environment. So Python 3 env my env. I feel like we kind of did that. Oh, okay, so uh, delete that then. Um, so now we theoretically have a virtual environment called my env, which is stupid. Um, source my env bin active. Okay. Uh, source my env bin, bin active. Okay. I uh, still not seeing that change. Um, and then we're going to pip install the YouTube API install dependencies in the virtual environment. Okay. But I am pretty confident that I don't have pip. It would have to be pip three. Oh, okay. So pulling it through the virtual environment, I guess. Um, run uh, your Python script. Okay, still not seeing that, but whatever. Okay, so now we're gonna run our Python script in our myenv virtual Python environment. Oh, cool, okay, sick. Enter a YouTube URL. All right, let's uh, do my latest video for work. Preview deploys from- I know there was an uploaded transcript for this. I'm just gonna grab the URL from the bar, not the share URL, and see what happens. Okay, wow, sick. Okay, so this is pretty sweet. This script actually works. Let's see, when you're done, uh, deactivate the virtual environment. I have no idea what any of this means, but I, I kinda trust you. Okay, so we're back into our normal environment, not the virtual environment. Interesting, so this command, sourcing this, uh, my env bin, bin, bin active. Why can't I say bin active? Uh, bin activate uh, is what sets up a kind of local environment for me um, as far as my dependencies and pip and Python and all that stuff are concerned. I'm still not seeing um, the connection here, but maybe that's just because it's looking for a global environment. I don't know. I'm just going to let uh, it do its thing. I've, I've deactivated this now. So let's initialize a uh, Git repository. Whoa, am I supposed to commit all this stuff? If you know Python, uh, or actually, hold on. No, no, no one needs to know Python. Okay, I'm initializing a Git repository. Am I supposed to commit the my env virtual environment? Great question, so encouraging. Generally, you should not commit the virtual environment to the Git repository. Here's why. Virtual environments are specific to local machine and can be large. Yes, as we as we see right here, quite large. Instead, add myenv to your .gitignore file. Okay, uh, I'm assuming I can't apply this because it doesn't seem to know how to make files. So um, let's make a new file, .gitignore and uh, canceled. Now can we apply? Apply to git ignore. Yes. So once the file's in, it knows how to do it. We'll accept that. Create a requirements.txt file in your project dependencies. So, okay, so I need to run this, it looks like. Oh, I keep dragging and copying. That's on me. Uh, I need to run this. So pip freeze requirements text. Okay, so it doesn't like that because I have a virtual environment. Instead of going into that, I'm just gonna use what, pip3. Okay, so that should add requirements.txt, which dumps some stuff in that I don't understand, but chill. Now I'm not so sure that I should have done that with my global environment. Should I run that command inside the virtual environment? Yes, you're absolutely right to ask that. You should run the pip freeze requirements. Okay, so let's delete this because we did it wrong. We're going to uh, source that and then uh, run our pip freeze command, which will generate a new requirements.txt, which is actually uh, different. So glad that I asked that. Um, this is a requirement and will contain the package install virtual environment. Great. Um, and then what did it say we needed to do? Let's copy that and put that inside of a readme file. Um, I wonder if I, okay, so I made a readme file. If I hit apply, hey, that's sick. Good job. Okay, continue. This is actually, actually coming along nicely. Save that. That should hide all of those. And so, yeah, so that's looking about right. Okay, this looks like the full list of things that we want to commit. So let's do this. Init new transcript script. 
<laughs> okay, uh, now I have one more thing that I want to do that will involve the whole code base. So, okay, so I'd like to package this up as a shareable script, make the requisite necessary changes to do so, and I'm gonna apply the entire code base to this question. So it's gonna throw everything in there, certainly. Uh, I'll modify the script to make it more shareable and user-friendly. Here's what we'll do. Uh, here's the modified script. Okay, so YouTube SRT, great. I don't see a diff, so I'm kinda just gonna trust it. Oh, there we go. So we apply that, we do see the diff. Cool, cool. Fine, wouldn't even know what to say about that. So we applied, but I think we still have to save it. And then um, add the following contents to the readme. Okay, can I apply this? Yes, continue. Um, Python YouTube scripts, and then we would in strings do that, optionally specify an output file name. Oh, cool, so now this will actually spit it out to a file, which is very nice using a pretty standard dash O convention for the output file. Um, these changes make the script more user-friendly and easier to share. Okay, that's great, but maybe I need to be more specific. Okay, thanks, but I mean as a package that someone can download and use on their system. I apologize for the misunderstanding. You're right, let's package this as a proper Python package that can be installed and used system-wide. Here's what you need to do. So first, let's restructure the project. Very cool. Um, update the main.py. Oh, okay. Okay, so as life goes sometimes, uh, my son's about to start drum lessons and um, I gotta wrap this up, but we actually got further than I expected. So uh, I guess in the follow-up, I'll see how we can restructure this project and um, and then eventually get it somewhere runnable um, like a Cloudflare worker. Uh, if you wanna see more AI projects like this, I'm probably gonna do this through the course of September as I learn a little bit more about creating whole projects and languages that I don't know with Cursor. That's it, subscribe, share, or don't. Peace.